Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and connect two QNAP NASes together using QNAP's hybrid backup sync. Specifically, we will have one QNAP local and one QNAP remote because one will be here in our studio for footage and one will be at my editor's place and they will sync together. Huge shout out to QNAP for hooking us up with this two bay NAS. This is the TS-262 four gig version that will be linked in the video description. And a huge shout out to Seagate for hooking us up with two 10 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro drives that we'll be using in our NAS right here. Those will also be linked in the video description. Now let's go ahead, let's get everything set up and running. All right, so our TS-262 has been set up. Take a look at it right here on QFinder. There it is. We also will be using a TS-253D to connect both of these together remotely to sync up. So first, let's go into our TS-262 two settings and configure that. First thing we need to do on our remote unit is to go to the app center and download HBS3 hybrid backup sync. So just select this. There's a search bar up here. You can just start typing HBS and it should pop right up. Hit install. In my case, it says open because we've already installed it. And then you can come back here and then you can open it up. Where we need to now go to the services section and we're gonna go ahead and enable the remote NAS RTRR server. So toggle that to enabled. Set up your password right here, and then you shouldn't have to configure anything else, but I went ahead, I toggled on enable TCP BBR congestion control. I'm not sure if this will or won't make a difference in my use case, but I have really good internet from my ISP here, but my editor does not. So in the event that this will help us or make our life easier, I went ahead and I toggled that on. So once you have that set up, just hit apply and okay. And everything will load and populate right here. And there we go. We can go ahead now and exit out of this. And let's now go to our other device that's going to be staying with us in our home, our office, or our business, the main device, whatever you want to call it. Now we're on our main NAS, our primary NAS, whatever you want to call it. So same thing, go to the app center, search for HBS3 hybrid backup sync, get it downloaded, then open it up. We got to configure the same services again. So enable that and create a password for this NAS in account. So you can go ahead and do that there. And since we checked this box on the other one, we're gonna check it on this one as well and then hit apply. So simple and straightforward, the same steps for both, but now we're gonna take this a step further on this unit and we're gonna go up to the sync section where we need to create a sync job. Select the sync now button and you have three different options. We're gonna choose two-way sync job and we're gonna choose remote NAS. They do have cloud server options depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But for us, we wanna sync up both of these together. And then we need to add our new account. You may or may not have something here if you've previously already done this. In our case, we have it here because we've already done this already as a trial. But let's pretend like we haven't. We're gonna to go to add a new account. You can name it if you want. You just need to copy and paste the IP address. You can find that in QFinder or maybe at the top of whatever web browser you're in. You should be able to find the IP address of your NAS. This is gonna be the NAS that you're trying to connect to. So in our case, the white one that you're seeing right here, RTS262. And then you can even conduct a speed test and then you just select create. So name it if you want, IP address, password for it, and create and you're all set and ready to go. So we'll enter into ours really quick. I'll show you right here. So we got our IP address, password entered. We can even conduct a speed test, which is really cool. So I'll do that right now. 281 megabytes per second. That's what we're getting with this, which is fantastic. That's about as fast as the drives are that are in this, the Iron Wolf Pro drive. So pretty cool. So once we have that entered, we can select it. And now we're taken to this screen where we can name the job, add a description. You can view and edit both devices. And now we need to select our folder to pair with. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a pair folder here. We're gonna select this folder and we're gonna select the same folder on the other one to make things easy for us so we know where everything's going to be synced. Moving further down, we have our conflict policy here where we can rename local files, replace local files, rename remote files, replace remote files, overwrite older files. 
So in our case, for now, we're just gonna do rename remote files. This might be a little bit of trial and error for us. I wanna do overwrite older files, but I'm a little nervous about, you know, deleting or having the wrong file at the end of the day. So just to be safe, we'll do rename remote files. We'll select next. Now we gotta choose our schedule here. There's multiple scheduling options. One time, periodic, daily, weekly, or monthly. I'll click through those really quickly. But we wanna do periodic. I want this to be as um, in sync as possible. So anyways, our wait interval, it can't be zero. I wish it could be real time all the time. So, and for some reason they show one, two, three, and four, but you can't select those. So five minutes is the closest periodic interval that we can get. So we're gonna select okay. You might notice too, if you'd rather run the job after another job or have no schedule, you could do that. There's a sync now option here. So we can select that too. So we can conduct our sync. We can hit next. Then we have enable filters and exclude system generated temp files. There's advanced filters too. If you wanna build any of that out, I don't think we need any of that. And then we have our next screen. It walks us through a confirmation of the job, start time interval, end date, network interface automatic. And now at this point, we can just go ahead and hit create. So this should work out for me, hopefully. I'm gonna wait two more minutes. If you can see the system clock down here, it's 8.33. I wanna wait till 8.35. So I know every five minute interval on the clock going forward from here on out, I'll know that it will start syncing then. So I'm just gonna wait two minutes and then I'm gonna hit the create button and then we'll come back here and see what happens after that process. All right, it's 8.35, let's let it rip. And here we go. Now we're at this screen where it's syncing up and our next sync is exactly what I wanted at 8.40. So take a look right here. Everything's syncing up and ready to go. So we got quite a bit of data that we're gonna be bringing through here. So we'll come back and see once it's finished. All right, so I'm at the 5% sync update. So I just wanna show you how much data we are copying over, 4.67 terabytes to get this synced up right away, which is why, again, we wanted to do this locally first versus remotely. So now going forward, hopefully it's only hundreds of gigabytes or maybe like a terabyte at a time versus four terabytes. So that's what we're doing. We'll just continue to let this work itself out and take as long as it needs. All right, we've made it past the 50% mark. We're at 58% synced and we're under the two terabyte mark as well, which is great. So it's taken about five and a half hours so far. So another five or five and a half left and this will be all synced up. It's the next day and everything is synced and ready to go. It finished yesterday, took about 11 hours and 20 minutes from start to finish. No issues at all. Everything is synced up and it's working properly. So now our next step is to take this to its remote location and get it in its final resting spot. We'll update the IP address and make sure everything's up and running. So it's been set up at my editor's place. Let me walk you through what we had to do. Obviously plug this into a power supply. We have it connected directly via the included ethernet cable to the router. His router was very simple and straightforward. It's super basic directly from the ISP. We were able to pull up a mobile app to reserve an IP address and set up port forwarding for our NAS. That's all we had to configure on his router. Yours will just look different depending on your manufacturer and brand, but you should follow a similar procedure to set up port forwarding. Now we're back here in the studio with our local NAS and let's go over what we have to change and configure from what we previously did to now get it to sync up across the internet verse just locally. So on the local device, go ahead, open up HBS3 again, and I wanna walk you through what we need to do. So currently we have our sync job right here, and you'll notice we do have an option to edit this job, but there's no way to change the devices that I could find. So when I initially did this, I just deleted the job and I set everything up again, but the good news is you don't have to do that. You can just go ahead and go down to the storage spaces option, find your device, there's an edit option here, and you can edit the IP address and host name right there and change the port or anything else 
as needed. If you happen to delete the job, don't worry. You can create that whole job again, and it's not gonna have to redo the terabytes and terabytes of data. When we did that, it just synced up any remaining files and everything else was good to go, which was awesome. Because I was a little bit nervous. I wasn't sure if that was gonna work, but it did, no issues there. But it's even easier if you wanna just change it right there and be all set and ready to go. On the remote device, go ahead and open up my QNAP Cloud. And from here, go down to DDNS, where you can copy and paste the URL that you see right there. And that's what you're gonna use to be able to access everything to get them to sync. That's how we've done it and everything is working great. So you'll copy and paste that back in HBS3 when you wanna edit your storage space here, or if you wanna just use that from the beginning to set up your job, you can do it that way as well. But everything is syncing up, it's working great. So really happy with everything overall. I do wish it was real time as opposed to the five minute delay, but for us, it's good enough. Best of luck to you as you get everything set up. Hopefully you're just as happy as we are, improving our workflow, saving time, energy, and money.